Hi everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean and this is In The Mixer and I have been absolutely buzzing for about three days now. Um, that's the difference between the first video that's just gone up on the channel, the introduction to the Football's Coming Home series and this one as well. I have been hanging out to start this season uh, to get to the weekend so that I can actually record the videos and actually start playing through the game a little bit. Like. It's been great and really exciting for the first couple of videos with the channel talking about our plans for the future and all that sort of thing. But like in reality, I just want to be playing the game as much as possible. Also as well, a lot of the feedback I got in the first video was really great. Thank you to everybody and apologies for those that sat through it and then right as we were scoring in the game against PSG in pre-season, uh, we dropped a whole bunch of frames and I don't think a lot of the content behind me was that good. We'll continue to have HD video on the camera that you're looking at right now. But what I've done is tried to drop the frame rate on the game itself, tried to drop the graphics quality a little bit. Um, and I'm just running this off my own laptop. It's a half decent laptop, but um, I think it was just trying, it was struggling a little bit trying to record the screen and my voice at the same time. Um, the camera's on its own little setup, so that one doesn't impact it too much. But for those of you that did sit through that entire video, this won't be any news to you, but we've had a pretty phenomenal preseason thus far. Um, haven't conceded a goal yet. Absolutely smashed some lower league sides, which has been great for morale. And then in that last game, we also beat um, PSG 1-0 with a goal to Jermaine Defoe after about half an hour. Great combination play between he and Ashley Barnes up front. For those of you that haven't watched that first video, I would highly recommend that you go back and go through it because it outlines our tactic, uh, what we want to do in the save, what we're trying to achieve, and the players that we've brought in. We do still have one more player that we're trying to bring in. It will either be, it won't be Martin Stecklenberg, but it will either be this man, Jack Grealish, to play on that left-hand side of our midfield, or alternatively, Nathan Redmond, who we have gone back in for a couple of different times now. We just can't get Southampton to accept a bid. Like, we've offered some insane money, offered about £40 million for him, but... Uh, they want it structured in a way that we can't currently do. We only have seven and a half million, I think, left, or seven point eight five million left in our transfer budget, and they want a deal or um, some sort of structured fee that has them getting like ten million up front. And I just, I can't see a way that I'm going to be able to afford it. Though we do have roughly three weeks left in the transfer window, if we can offload some of these guys in the under twenty threes that are currently on the transfer list, like Josh King, Harry Arda, Asmi Begovic, Arta Burak these guys that are on decent wages and have decent values, if we can even get like two and a half million for them, we'll be able to get Redmond in. Uh, I'm also going to try and give Jack Grealish as much time as possible to get over his, uh, I think it's a torn, like his, it's an abdominal injury, I think. He's got a tear or something like that. Um, if we can bring him in, he'll be great as well, obviously, because he improved so much throughout the game. I mean, cried about Ryan Sessegnon as well, but he isn't interested because he just signed a new contract with Fulham. So, yeah, there's a couple of different options for that left-hand side. I'd really love to get a left-footed player to play it, uh, but we just have to kind of wait and see what happens in the rest of this transfer window. But today, Manchester United away from home. It's a hell of a way to kick off the season. We are second in the league. Don't tell anybody that we haven't played any games yet. I'm still using it as an achievement. There has been a bit of niggle in the media before the game. Uh, Mourinho took umbrage with the fact that we only have English players. Um, it seemed to, I think the question was phrased to him like it was being lauded. Uh, that we have so many English players in there. Obviously, that's the aim of the series, trying to bring through English talent. But uh, he criticised it, and I fired back at him. So we haven't even kicked the ball in anger in terms of competitions this year, and I'm already starting beef with Jose and Manchester United, which cuts me a little bit because they are the team I support in the real world. First lineup of the season, we're only making one change on the team that beat PSG. Butland will continue in goal. He was fantastic. I'm going to bring in Francis on the right-hand side. He is the captain. He is a team leader. I'm just trying to keep him on side early doors. If we can get towards December, January, whatever else, I'll try and rotate him out of the season. I actually think I like Adam Smith a little bit better as a supporting fullback. He's got better attacking traits, and I think that's going to be really helpful uh, as we slowly start adding more and more to our tactic. Again, the only instruction at the moment is going to be retain possession. That's all we need to be focused on because that's all the board expects of me. We're going to go with Gibson and Cook, continue to build their understanding, that left-footed, right-footed centre-back partnership. Daniel's out at left fullback, who did such a good job on Mbappe when he came on against PSG. Pugh, who put a beautiful cross in that eventually led to the goal. Cook in the middle, who I thought was fantastic, but I got a really shit rating. Sermon, who's going to be super important as our deep-lying defensive playmaker. And Jordan Ibe will continue his development as a right midfielder over there. Barnes and Defoe up top. On the bench, we have backup goalkeeper Will Dennis, Tyrone Mings, Dan Gosling, Mikel Njoli. I think I'm pronouncing that horribly. 
Jack Simpson and Adam Smith. Still got McTominay who can't play because he's, this is his parent club. Uh, Junior Stanislas is still three weeks away at least. Callum Wilson's another month away at least. And King and Davis two to five weeks. But that's enough talking. We've had more than enough talking across the first three videos on the channel. Let's get stuck into some gameplay. And fingers crossed the frame gods are with us and we don't drop any frames. And you guys get to see the same high quality content that I get to see as well. And teams have warmed up now. It looks like they're going into it with a pretty similar 4-2-3-1 that they usually play. Uh, Blin, Jones, Bay, and Valencia across there. Valencia is obviously an attacking fullback in this sense. Um, De Gea in goal, obviously a superstar of the competition. Pogba as sort of that deep line playmaker. Matic will be the destroyer next to him. Martial and Sanchez on the wings. Marta in the, the 10 and Lukaku up top. Dressing room, I'm just trying to keep morale up. Uh, you can see it's already pretty good across the board in the squad. Uh, I'm just going to assertive, assertive away, calm at home. That's usually how we, how we are. And I'm just going to say we've got nothing to lose here. We know how good we are. Let's show everyone what we're capable of. We beat PSG the last time out. There's no reason we can't defend in a similar fashion and get a good result today. I'm just going to assertively tell the defense I have faith in you to go out there and make a difference. None of them responded pretty positively, but I wanted to make sure that we call out the defense as being super important. Away trips like this to top sides and Manchester United in this game are a top side, uh, are really tough. So special J for me, first one in the manager's chair at Bournemouth and albeit it's at Old Trafford as well. As you can see here, I've set the graphics to low. It makes it look like we're playing uh, on a potato, but hopefully it means that the revision or it means that the content comes through a little bit clearer. So it looks like we're starting not too badly unless we're about to cough the ball up here. Butlin clears it long. The ball runs through. I thought that was maybe going to be a foul. I'm concerned with the length of this highlight, considering we are still one minute in. Alexis has gotten in behind. It's a ball back across, and Lukaku... Ugh. I know I spoke earlier about how proud I was of the performance against PSG, but we're inside a minute, and we have already conceded in the actual season. Pogba with the ball here out wide. Alexis just gets a really good touch inside, to be fair. And that replay speed is way too quick. We'll have to drop that one back down. Okay, we should also probably drop back the match speed there. All right, so 15 minutes in now. We have managed to get outside that 10-minute period without conceding again. But as you can see from the stat line, as we look at it here, they've had the majority of the ball thus far, which is to be expected, I guess, at Old Trafford. Ball goes out to Daniels now, inside to Gibson. I might have slowed it down too much. Barnes just needs to hold the ball up here. He slides it out wide to Jordan. Is he going to go around his man? No, he's going to cough the ball up to... U Blind, who finds Pogba, now with Marta. Oh, it's a good win back from Sermon. Can he play the ball forward? Looks for Barnes in the channel. He's dragged Jones out. I thought maybe he was going to put a square ball back across. Defoe was lurking. This is a real concern when we get midfielders facing the goal on halfway because Martial is super quick and Butlin gets across well and holds the ball. But still, a good run. They've got danger. Real polar opposites to the last game that we actually showed because... Because as we can see, they are starting to pile on the pressure. Ball in there, Pogba flicks it on, and it looks like it's, I think, Francis there that cleared it off the line, and he's won the ball back in the corner. Probably would have been handy if I didn't have the settings open while you guys were trying to watch that highlight, but that's fine. Six shots now to them, three for ourselves, four and two on target. We haven't really seen a highlight that really benefits us all that much. Matic there, plays it forward to Lukaku, holds the ball well on halfway, finds Blind, who looks to just be playing a defensive role and staying back deep. Martial seems to be having his way with it, so I guess that kind of makes sense. This is the concern here. It's that little area when Cook pushes to the ball that they end up with a bunch of players goal side. You can see here Alexis has just walked past his man and he's found the second. What we might do is just go defensive to get to half time. Been training that standard attacking and defensive tactics throughout pre-season it's good interplay here Alexis just goes around one and he finds a good finish to be fair to him and then runs off to the corner flag to do his standard cartwheels and backflips and whatever else it's not the greatest start to the season that uh, we ever could have had but look it's going to be a good marker for us we'll always look back and think oh shit Matt, remember how the season started and look where we absolutely finished or it's just going to be like this for the entire season and we're really going to struggle trying to integrate these new English players and, and the new style in the way we want to be playing. 
Right, so a goal to Sanchez and an assist as well. He is tearing us apart so far. It looks like Daniels and Gibson are struggling with him on that side. We seem to have tidied things up a little bit more since we went defensive. I'm going to give it another 15 minutes. Uh, and I'm just going to say assertively. Show me something else in the second half. Who switched off? Mark Pugh, calmly. You weren't that bad, but you can still improve. He's still switched off. So we might give him... 15 more minutes and then bring somebody else on. We do have youngsters on the bench. And if we're going to get done, we might as well get done while blooding youth. Ball across now. Jordan's on the top of the box. Can he find the strike? It's not a great one. Oh, he goes again. And on the rebound, he's put that one home. 47th minute and we've pulled the goal back. So great response from Jordan, not Jordan. Let's have a look at that one in 3D or in Fuzzy Potato 3D. Jordan plays the ball across. Oh, it's a good finish. Let's just drop that. Uh, I still, it, this replays are so quick that I still haven't had time, three of them in, to slow them down a little bit so I can talk through them a little bit more. It says Lewis Cook's made a lot of mistakes today. They said the same thing against PSG, but every positive highlight we had, he was entirely across. So it's interesting to see how that one's working out at this stage. Mark Hughes looking very nervous for some reason. I'm not sure why. He's got nothing to lose, and he's 30. Like, he's one of the more seasoned veterans in this. Jordan with the ball forward now. Oh, Martin has caught it, and Martial's gotten in behind. We need someone to get across to him quickly. He's found Lukaku, and Lukaku with the finish. They're so good on the counter. You just can't get caught. Goal side, the way Francis was there. And it says that it's Barnes' mistake. Yeah, Barnes is the one that coughs the ball up on halfway, but it's this gap here. Once Francis has caught goal side, that's pretty much it. Lukaku with the first time finish. All right, let's have a look at some of these player ratings here. We don't have a tremendous amount to do. We might bring Smith on for the right-hand side because just fresh legs to help try and deal with Martial. We might go with uh, Jolie on the left. Get the young 18-year-old winger out there, see what he can do. And we'll go with Gosling at the box-to-box -box role. I know they always say don't make three subs at once, but we're either going to get somebody sent off right now or we're going to pull a goal back and it's going to be super interesting. Or we'll get an injury, which always seems to happen. I have faith, get out there, make a difference. None of them care. Couldn't tell if that was a highlight going on behind there if it was just while we were making the change. I think it was just while we were making the change. Herrera comes on for Matic for United. Uh, thankfully, oh god, they brought Rashford on, which is like he'd be our superstar if he was in our squad. But Martial has headed to the bench, and Sanchez has picked up a knock, so maybe they're going to take him off now as well. We just go into damage control for the last ten minutes or so, see if we can hang on here. Three one, I could look like away from home. Manchester United are very, very good, and some would even say that they're a little bit overpowered in this game. Look at the quality that they're bringing off the bench. We're like we're bringing off a less than two star. Oh, God. We're bringing on a less than two-star left winger who's only 18. Oh, they're wide open here. Lukaku could have had a hat-trick there. We are set to defensive, so I'm not sure why we keep giving these angles in behind. It might have to do with our fullbacks being on support instead of defend. Maybe that's something that when we go defensive, we need to adjust them back to be defend duties as well. That's okay. That's why we picked relatively generic shapes and relatively generic formations. It's so that we can adjust and change as we need to. See how much extra time. Four minutes look like there's going to be. We don't have any more subs to make. They don't have any more subs to make either. It looks like the game stagnated a little bit, but they've got a free kick here. Finds Rashford at the top of the box. It's a good tackle. Can we get out on the counter? We have. Smith's gotten away. He plays Barnes forward. Can he release Defoe? Defoe might be one-on-one. -on -one. He might not have the pace. Oh, and he's blazed over. I think it is too late in the game for us to pull anything back, but if we can at least get pride or at least improve our goal difference by picking up another goal, and now I dare say that's going to be it. Marta plays the ball forward, and that'll be a goal kick. And that's it. Manchester United deserve their win, and to be fair, if we look at the stat line here, 19 shots, 9 on target, 9 shots, 4 on target, uh, 9 on target, 4 on target for us. Fouls we just shaded. No yellow cards, relatively clean game for everyone. 54% possession to 46. Just that difference in quality, that difference in class, it shows in the subs that they brought on. And Romelu Lukaku gets player of the match with two goals and an 8.8. .8, but really, it was Sanchez and Martial on the wings that absolutely tore us apart. I'm not going to lie, we'll probably have heavier defeats throughout the course of this season. But still, it would have been nice to start the season with a win. I'm just going to say, unlucky boys, would have been nice to win, but it wasn't meant to be. A few have responded well, which is good. It looks like Mark Pugh is just, uh, I don't know, uh, some sort of puddle of... 
Man United East to victory, a 3-1 win for them. Butland makes Bournemouth debut. Uh, this press conference will likely be relatively straightforward. Um, he can have his opinion, but I believe in my team. I have to keep things in perspective, but it's a long season. He had a good game. Well done, Lukaku. Gareth Southgate, could he be looking to bring football home? Is that why he's at Old Trafford? Uh, chances are he's probably watching a lot of their squad, but uh, he's checking out Jack Butlin and Steve Cook as well, which is very cool. All right, let's jump ahead now to the Burnley game where we are going to be playing at home. So we can be a bit more enterprising, maybe not spend so much of it on defensive. And bam, just like that, we're forward another week. Uh, the other results came through. I think we were actually the first game of the Premier League season, which was very interesting. If we look at competitions here, we aren't currently in the bottom three. We are just outside of it. Negative two goal difference, though. Uh, Burnley, it looks like, had a nil-all draw. Oh, no, sorry, they won. They won one nil. Um, I'm not sure what that game was. Burnley beat Man City on the first day of the season at home, 2-1. So, shit. All right, so they might actually be decent. Uh, we can have a look at our squad here and the lineup that we're going to go with. We can now bring in Scott McTominay as well, which is good. He's not cup tied against Burnley. It was United that actually owns him, so they had control. Um, Stanislas has returned to light training as well. Still two weeks away. I'm not going to rush him. So, similar set up, set up to us as the last game, just the subs are different. They've got Ward and Loughton as the fullbacks, me and Tarkowski as the centre-back partnership, Brady on the left, Arfield on the right, Cork and Westwood in the centre, Vokes up top with the big target man, Chris Wood, the Kiwi international, Tom Heaton in goal, we did actually put a bid in for Tom Heaton earlier in pre-season, and for Nick Pope as well, who's on the bench, neither of them wanted to come. It's a return to Burn uh, sorry, it's a first game against Burnley for Ashley Barnes, who we picked up from them in the summer. Fingers crossed uh, we can get a good performance out of him because we really need it. I'm just going to say calmly because we're at home. I expect to see a much better performance from you today and a few of them look motivated, which is good. That's exactly the response we want. Still just using that standard setup uh, with very few team instructions. I will start to add more team instructions as we get further and further through this game and through the competition and see where we're actually struggling. And if the United game was anything to go by, it's our defensive line that probably needs the most structure. Wood now with the ball out wide. I have turned the graphics quality up to medium. Hopefully it means you guys can still see it and we haven't dropped frames yet. And Wood, oh God, we're not starting these games strongly. We're three minutes in or the third minute and Chris Wood has scored to send us into the relegation places. See the ball here from Westwood. is isn't half bad. Gets it out wide to Brady. Brady hooks the ball up. The header comes back off the crossbar initially. And I need to slow these down. Okay, so hopefully that'll be slower on the next goal, which will, of course, be our equaliser. Haven't started that poorly. 6.88s across the board. Cook with the ball and now finds Jordan at the top of the box. He scored in a similar range against United, but it's me that closes down. Me, the player, not me, the person. Oh, Wood with the ball now. He's holding it up very well and getting about the pitch. It's concerning. Cook hooks the ball away. Barnes with it now. Can he bring some hold-up play? Defoe's gotten in behind. Can he get away from Tarkowski? Oh, it's a decent strike. And it's just wide. The onrushing Heaton couldn't get a hand to it. Need to get those on target though, please, Jermaine. But at least like, at least we've had a highlight. It would be horrible if we got all the way to half-time and hadn't done too much. Francis with a throw in here. Finds Barnes. He's lost the ball to Cork, who's their ball-winning midfielder. That was really the only difference between the two shapes, actually. They were playing a 4-4-2 as well. But with a ball-winning midfielder instead of that... Uh, deep-lying uh, playmaker that we have. Defoe with the ball now. He's got an overlapping runner. If you can find Pugh, he hasn't. Loughton's won the ball back and found Vokes. Vokes looks for Wood early and back to Vokes. They're carrying the ball forward now. Westwood seems to be there, more attacking of the two central midfielders. Ward to Brady. Brady's the concern. His crossing is fantastic. And Wood has got another goal off a Brady cross. Oh, God, we need to do something on that right-hand side. And it may mean that we have to bring Adam Smith on at half-time. All right, so slowed down here. Westwood is going to play the ball out to Ward. Ward just looks up the line for Brady. It's a really simple play. Hangs the ball up there, and we're struggling to deal with them in the air at present. I think it was Pugh was the player that Wood jumped over, but it really should be somebody else marking him. I've got my assistant setting the individual instructions, and maybe we need to look at tighter marking on Chris Wood or something to that effect. Westwood with the ball now. Vokes coming forward again. Daniels plays it through to Sermon. Back to Butland. It's a long ball forward towards Barnes. He doesn't get there first. Ward finds it. Brady on the overlap. Brady has done all the damage and he's set up Vokes again. We are getting absolutely crushed on our right-hand side. Steve Francis and Jordan Ibe 
defensively, there's just something going wrong with those two. See Butland here with the long ball forward. It's just put straight back in, and the awareness there from Francis. He runs to the ball instead of to the man, and I dare say it. Steve Francis will be coming off at half time. I don't know if it's a cool... Uh, look, you can't blame everything on one player, but we beat PSG when he wasn't the starting right back, and now we're losing. We've lost the first two games of the season when he's been in the starting lineup. Butland with the ball now to Daniels. Plays forward to Pugh. Sermon. Back to Pugh again. Are we going to cop possession up here, or is this going to be a highlight for us? Oh, it's a terrible place to try a crossfield switch. Straight through the middle. Jordan, thankfully, has won the ball back. It's a ball through. Can Defoe get on the end of it? No, he can't. It's a ball back to Heaton. Chris Wood has had the... Oh, there you go. Gibson actually won one. We can keep Gibson tight to him. That would be super helpful. Cook now comes out, wins the ball. Westwood's got it again. Brady's doing all the damage. Wood, oh, thankfully, for the first time, they have a highlight off a Robbie Brady assist that actually goes over as a header. But we are getting thoroughly demolished by Burnley, of all teams. Who would have thought we'd do a double header with Man United away and Burnley at home, and it'd be Burnley that did us the dirty. But Brady with the ball in now. No one's marking Wood. No one is marking Wood. That is incredibly frustrating. He's got a hat-trick inside 30 minutes, and we are 4-0 down. I did not see that coming. So maybe we have to go in and do our sort of defensive set pieces or our attacking set pieces as well. Or we've dropped frames, and you guys haven't seen any of that. Either way, there's improvements that need to be made. Okay, so... Sam with the ball now, finds Cook to Lewis Cook. 4-4 four -four to Defoe. He loses the ball almost immediately. Our ball retention today has been absolutely horrid. Cook cuts that one out, gives him to Daniels. Daniels' default setting is to go back to the keeper, apparently. This one moving the ball around. Find Barnes now. Just got to hold it up. Francis has Sermon inside. Well, he's getting closed down by two. Probably holding it a little bit too long there from Sermon. And the ball four is cut out by me, and it's Westwood and Brady combining again. Brady finds the overlapping ward. First 4A forward we've seen for him. It's a ball in towards Vokes, and Vokes has scored. This is absolutely shit. Uh, change tactics. Let's just go to our defensive tactic. Just to get us to half time, then I'll scream at them at half time, and we'll go attacking, and we'll just see what happens. It's a learning curve. But who would have thought after the strength of our preseason, we come out and really kind of put this flaccid of performance together. Pews out wide. Can he get a decent ball in? Finds Barnes, but nothing doing. Looks like the shot was deflected or charged down by whoever. Later scores don't... Ah, oh, there we go. They've just loaded in now. This would take Burnley to top of the table with a seven goal difference, albeit five of them against us. Oh, sorry. Seven goals, four, six goal difference. And six points from their opening two games. All right, let's fire the rocket. Take that hairdryer out of my pocket. Aggressive. That was absolutely terrible, which is fair. Who switched off? Andrew Sermon, of course he fucking has. Uh, tactics. We're just going to go attacking. And we're just going to start throwing caution to the wind. So I might push this winger on to be an attacking winger as well. And we might put Ash push Ashley Barnes to be an attacking player as well. So we've gone four attacking attributes here. We've got one, two, three supports, three defences, or four defences if you include the goalkeeper. And I think the big one is taking off Simon Francis because he was getting absolutely mauled out there by Robbie Brady. Let's see how we go from there. So it's an attacking lineup with our two more attacking fullbacks out there as well. And, I, like, let's be honest, we're not going to score five goals and a half, um, not even at home, and certainly not this early in the season, apparently, given some of our form. But uh, if we could just do something to save a bit of face, to start getting a couple of highlights together, maybe pull two goals back, get it to 5-2, I'd consider that an accomplishment. Look at that front two, Wood and Vokes, three goals and two goals between them. Robbie Brady with three assists from that left wing. It's a shame that uh, Vokes as well, Brady's... Irish, I think, and of course the big Kiwi Chris Wood on a hat trick. Brady's got the ball now, he hangs it up, and Butland comes out and claims, thankfully. I think that's only the second time we've seen Robin Bra Robbie Brady get the ball at his feet and it hasn't led to a goal. Tarkowski reads that ball out well. Defoe didn't even really commit to it, which is a shame. Loughton with a great overlapping run, he hangs the ball up for Vokes, and thankfully it hits the post before Cook scrambles it away. So 
This has not been our finest performance, though. Barnes is in behind now. Can he get himself some glory back against his old team? He hangs the ball up. Oh, Pugh's there, and Pugh has pulled a goal back. So Barnes has done the dirty work, gotten out wide. I think it was pretty much just a keeper error. We'll have a look at here in three dimensions. Barnes in a wide area, playing as that target man attacking. He just hangs a ball back into the 18-yard box here. And yeah, it looks like Heaton's come out and punched it for no reason, but I'll take it. Like Sometimes you need a little bit of luck like that, and Pugh gets his first goal of the year. And brings it back to only a four-goal margin. Surely this would see us go rock bottom of the table. If we scroll down there, yeah, it would. Negative six goal difference across the first two games of the season. That ain't that good. All right, who's struggling the most? Oh, God, it's really... Uh, you could pick any of the players. Looks like Lewis Cook has the worst match rating with a 6.0. Um, maybe we look at changing one more of our defenders, potentially. Steve Cook looks is on a yellow. That's a concern. So what I might do is I'm just going to give a team talk here to Dan Gosling and say assertively, I have faith in you. He doesn't give a shit, of course. Why would he? We're five on down. We'll give. I don't want to do all three subs this early. I know I made one at half time, just in case that Steve Cook yellow card comes back up to haunt us. So we still have some wiggle room to take off a striker. Barnes has gotten in behind. Can he get himself a goal? No. Heaton comes out well and puts it past the post. Hey, it's an improve. It's an improvement. We're having actual highlights and actual chances now instead of those Defoe half chances. Speaking of, he's got the ball now. Plays Jordan in. Get a ball in. Oh, Jordan. He, for some reason, pulled it back onto his wrong foot, his left foot. All he had to do was just put a ball across the face of goal there. Hopefully someone gets in there and pokes it home. 67th minute now. Butlin with the ball forward. Barnes is unchallenged. Can bring it down. Play Sermon. Sermon can split left or right. Finds Gosling forward. Defoe's in now. Gets a strike away. All he really had to do there was play a ball across the six-yard box, and we had two players back stick. Ball forward again. Cook comes forward. Defoe now. No. Tarkowski reads it well. Vokes plays Wood. Oh, and Wood scored. Yeah, it's 6-1. Tarkowski. It's just a long ball forward. Vokes knocks it down. Oh, knocks it through. Ben Gibson's not had a great game back in the Premier League after getting relegated last year with Middlesbrough. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe that means they're not cut out for football at this level. Pew's in behind. Can he get there? No, he can't. He keeps it in for Loughton to counter-attack. Gibson to the ball first. Sermon plays Jordan out wide to Barnes. Can we find him again? No, we can't. The 1-2 isn't there. Wood's got the ball inside his own half. Barnes cuts it out well. He's been a bit more lively in the second half. Credit to him. Jordan comes forward. Can he get the shot away? He does, but Heaton makes a good save. A couple of good saves from Tom Heaton in this half. All right, Sermon with the ball in now. Sermon's a lefty. That's interesting. Maybe I should swap your sides. Jordan, can he play it out wide to him again? No, he's going to dribble it in. Hangs the ball up. There's players in there. Pugh with the ball now. Just needs to get it across, and that's where Jermaine Defoe needs to be lurking. That fox in the box. Anything across the six-yard box, he needs to be the one poking at home. 15 minutes remaining now. We do have one more sub up our sleeve. What could we potentially do here? Let's put Gosling to the deep line defender role. Let's take Sermon off and give Scott McTominay his debut for the club. Assertively, I have faith in you. Please go out there and do something different to what we just did. He might not listen. Anything could happen. Defensive midfielder, Scott McTominay will come straight on. He's just a tireless midfielder is his description. Or young midfielder, I can't remember which one it actually said. Bournemouth, one. Burnley, six. Rock bottom of the table. If only Burnley had more English players, we would have ended up with that squad. Albeit I would have sold all the players that have done the damage today, but that's not the point. Ball goes back to Butler now. Is this another highlight for us? Me has had a fantastic game dealing with Barnes. I suppose they trained together for a long time. Gibson with the ball forward now. Defoe, oh no. Barnes with the ball now. Defoe's in behind. Can he get inside and find the finish? Oh, it's a decent strike. Probably could have taken a touch. He had more space to move into there rather than striking it from distance. So we've had 12 shots to their 15. Four shots on target to their eight. 12 fouls to seven. One yellow card to two on their end. And I think we've had more of the ball. Brady with the ball now. The danger man. Smith. Comes away with it. Gosling finds McTominay. What can he do? Very little. Ball knocked in. Good movement into the channel there from Barnes. Hangs the ball up for Defoe. McTominay will bring it down. We've got players on the left. Can we find Pew here? Get around him. No. Ball from deep. No. I mean, we're retaining possession. I guess that is the instruction I've got set on. And that's full time. I really thought maybe we'd get another shot in there. 55% possession. So we did shave that as well. 
Had this one down as a draw, still have improved wrong. Burnley have come away with a result they'll be delighted with. Fucking oath they will be. Six goals, five of them in the first half. Assertive, far from pleased. Everyone switched off. Fantastic. Wood sends Burnley top. Four goals from Chris Wood ensure Burnley move to the top of the Premier League after a 6-1 victory over Bournemouth on a warm summer's afternoon at Dean Court. Oh, yeah. All right, let's look at it this way. We can't get any worse than that. We can't get any worse to losing 6-1 at home. I'm going to storm out of my first press conference because just keep it interesting. And this doesn't make for very good reading, does it? Burnley themselves go top. Six goal difference after two games. We are rock fucking bottom. So the first change we'll make is tactically, we're just going to go defensive until we start getting a handle on this stuff because we haven't got a whole lot of depth until we get these players back. Stanislas still two weeks away. Wilson's still two weeks at least away. Keenan Davis is 12 days away. That's just from returning to training. I'm sure it'll take even longer for them to get back up to full fitness. And they'll be making bench appearances until then. All right, let's have a look at when we can come back next and do the next episode. So we, at least we're scoring. We haven't not scored in a game. Yeovil, yeah, we're not going to worry about. We'll come back at some point in September. Uh, I think it might be half decent to do... Let's come back and do Newcastle and Liverpool at home. So we'll do two games at Dean Court. We'll play two games away. Yeovil and Stoke. We'll see what kind of results we get in there. Uh, they're not too far down the track, so we can fire it out pretty quickly. All right, so it's been a... A long, long, long episode. I was so excited at the start of it to get back into this save and start getting through the games. And we've been absolutely battered, conceding nine goals, scoring only two, uh, and find ourselves rock bottom of the Premier League. It's only up from here. If you've enjoyed the video, if you love seeing my pain, if you love a redemption story, and this is the hitting bottom portion of it, either throw a like on the video or subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date when new content is released. Also, feel free to follow In The Mixer FM on Twitter. There will be a link to that in the description. Let's set a like target. If we get even one like, one singular like on either the upload of this video uh, or something like that, we'll do a double upload day and I'll record another video shortly. More than anything though, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate the view. I've been Sean. This has been depressing and I will see you in the mixer.